Hello everyone, Mimri here. Herald Bomber is a very classic fast mapper build. People love this build because you don't have to actively use any skills to deal damage, so you can focus more on avoiding damage. It is also good at both single target DPS and being efficient at clearing maps. The downsides are being squishy and often on the expensive side to complete the build. It is also not easy to scale the damage because Herald Thunderstorm is not a spell. Therefore, you can only scale its damage with lightning damage, elemental damage, and crit damage, which means you cannot utilize things like Paint Attunement or Arcane Surge to gain easy access to more damage. In 3.17, however, we have the new Annihilation Light Staff that gives us tripled elemental damage, which does benefit Herald Thunder, and it is fairly cheap. We also have the Omniscience Amulet that also gives us a lot of damage as well as elemental resistance, which helps us with combating the downside of the Annihilation Staff. These two items together gives us a huge amount of damage, which means a lot of the money can be saved from getting the expensive gears that were previously hard required. I've played around with the build on POB for a while and realized that this build can be made with 100% unique gears now and performs really well in tier 16 maps. I've also managed to kill Cyrus with it, so it is a decent bosser as well. In terms of defense, it has around 13,000 armor, 76% elemental resistance, and positive chaos resistance. It is still fairly squishy, but compared to my previous experience on the build, I've encountered far less random insta-death situations. This build is fairly simple, and the total cost is within 15 exalt, which I think is still reasonable for most people. So first, let's start with having a look at the gears. As we mentioned before, we use Annihilation Lights and Omniscience Amulets for the super high damage they provide. Obviously, you want to get the 60% reduced elemental resistance roll on the staff. Otherwise, it will be extra difficult to max your resistances. It shouldn't be too hard to get since it is the only stat that you have to roll on the weapon. By the way, if you still don't know what Omniscience is or how it works, I'm sure there are plenty of videos talking about it, so just search that up on YouTube. Anyways, since we are using Omniscience, the Black Sun Crest is the cheapest helmet you can get for getting high stats. We also use the Cyclopean Coil Belt for more stats, because the HP on it is very much needed. It is also completely exchangeable with Headhunters or Mageblood if you have the money for the upgrade, which will make the build an even better mapper. As for boots, we use this 2 Chaos Alberon's Warpath. This thing gives us 18% Omniscience, which is as good as getting 2 tier 2 stats. It also has decent armor, move speed, and Chaos Resistance. The only thing it is missing is some life. However, a rare boot with these stats that also has decent life will cost you somewhere around 5 to 10 exalt. So unless you are rich, just use the Alberon's Warpath. As for rings, two storm secrets is a hard required because they are what makes the build work. Again, if you're rich, you can find these rings with any corrupted implicits that you like. For example, I got these plus two all elemental resistance implicit instead of just lightning resistance, so I'm less vulnerable to elemental curses. And then we have the impulsor storm gift combo, which is what enables the explodey effect. We do need to kill a shock enemy to trigger the explodey effects on our Impulsor. We are using Elemental Focus on Herald of Thunder, which means our Herald of Thunder does not inherently shock. That's why we need the Enemies You Kill Are Shocked mod on the Storm Gift to force the shocked effect. Now, you will want to get a Storm Gift that has Fire and Cold Resistance on it, just so that it is easier for you to cap the resistances. However, you will still be able to cap your resistance regardless, so don't be too worried if you don't have the money. Now, let's move on to the skill tree. I've chosen a very long path from the witch area through the left hand side of the tree and all the way to the duelist area. There are some specific reasons as to why the tree has to look like this. First of all, a long path means we can use split personality to gain a large amount of omniscience. This also means we can reach 2 out of the 3 stat circles on the tree, which is another huge boost on our omniscience. 
Secondly, it allows us to gain Iron Reflex, since our gear is more evasion based. If you can't be close to maxing out the evasion, then it's really as good as having none. So converting them into armor will make evasion a lot more useful to have. Now originally, I was actually parting the right hand side of the tree because I wanted to utilize spell suppression to try and tank the character up. But I quickly realized that there are simply not enough resources to max out spell suppression on this build. And since the left hand side of the tree costs less points to obtain the same thing, so I picked the left hand side. Now along the path, we're pretty much just taking all the life passives and the good armor and resistance passives. And that's about it. Now you will run into some mana problems since I've utilized many cast when damage taken skills, which I'll talk about later. So to fix our mana issue, we need the mana recoup mastery over here. This is very powerful because the times when we are hitting the enemy, it is also the time when we are taking lots of damage from the rings and therefore we will be recouping lots of mana in the process. Similarly for our anointments, we want to grab Vampirism because it has both life unkill and life recoup, which provides most of our life sustain while mapping. You will also want to grab the Arcane Will over here using the Third of Hope since not only it is the best passives we can reach for mana region, but it also gives us more omniscience. As for the damage passives, we didn't take many of them, but the ones we do take all gives us a huge amount of damage boost. First of all, these two lightning damage passives are a no-brainer. They are the main reason we use the medium third of hope over here. Second, this lightning circle requires the least amount of points for us to grab a lightning mastery, which allows our non-crit damage to be lucky. And long story short, this mastery roughly gives us around 20% more damage. So yeah, take it. And since we're not scaling crits, we're also taking the elemental overload for the free 40% more damage. Now since we do need the occasional crit to trigger the elemental overload, and Hero of Thunder does not have any base crit, so we do need to get two medium cluster jewels that have self-fulfilling prophecy to give us some base crit. And finally, we can't be a Hero of Thunder build without the Calamitous Visions. As for the rest of the clusters, you want two large clusters, one of which needs to have Doriani's Lesson. The other skill on that cluster can either be Prismatic Hearts, which gives us elemental resistance, or Overshock, which gives us the highest DPS. And then you want to have both of these skills on the other large cluster jewel. Note that you will need to make sure that all the skills that you want are not positioned at the top of the cluster when you socket it into your tree because we are only using two passives out of the three. And the third one is there only to make sure that the skills we want are in the most passive efficient position. To check the passive position before you buy the cluster, click the little copy icon on the PoE trade, and then go to the POB to create any yellow item, hit the edit button, and then overwrite everything with what you've just copied. And you can just switch that cluster into the POB and it will tell you the position of the passives. As for the other passives for your medium clusters, other than self-fulfilling prophecy, you want Empower Envoy, just because it gives the most damage. As for the other jewels, one of them needs to have Life and Fire Cold Hybrid Resistance. If you have more currency, you can also go for Chaos Resistance here as well. As for the other jewel, just find any jewels that has life and corrupted blood immune implicit. It doesn't have to be a watcher's eye, I only got it because it was the cheapest jewel that has life and corrupted blood immune. Now you will most likely be running into resistance issues as soon as you are holding the annihilating light. So you might want to grab the practical application over here and the faith and steel over here until you have enough gear and passives to cap your resistance. Next up, the flasks. You want to have granite flask and a jade flask because they give the most amount of armor to this build through iron reflex. Your Jade Flask need to have Bleed Immune since none of the other flask has room to fulfill this job. You want to have a Topaz Flask that has increased move speed and craft a Use When Charge Reaches 4 Enchant on it so that it is automated to be on most of the time. 
The main purpose for the Topaz Flask is to reduce lightning damage taken, so we take less damage from our Storm Secret Rings. Similarly, the Oroth Resolve will give you 60 Watt that will not disappear while the Flask is active. You can view that as a 60 flat damage reduction to any incoming hit, which also works with the self damage from the Storm Secrets. Finally, we use a Rod God Quicksilver Flask because it has a 10 second base duration which can be further increased by consuming Frenzy Charges. Our skill setup does give us Frenzy Charges which I will be talking about next, so this flask can be guaranteed to always be on, especially when you give it the reuse at the end of the flask effect in Enchant. Finally, we move on to the skills and the Ascendancy passives together because they are closely related. Starting with Herald Thunder, you do want to get a level 21 version eventually, since gem level is also another huge source of damage. This is also why we want to get the Awaken added lightning damage and Awaken elemental focus, since both of them at level 5 will add gem levels to the supported skill. We then use Energy Leech, since it provides one of the highest amount of damage if you can get it to work. In this case, we can, because every time we deal damage, we are guaranteed to lose energy shield from the storm secret rings, and therefore we'll always be leeching energy shield. Next one is Inspiration, because not only it gives us lots of elemental damage, but it also has some crit chance, which will help us proc the elemental overload. Finally, I have Empower over here. Don't use Empower unless you can afford a level 4 Empower. Use Cruelty here instead, because a level 20 Cruelty only has around 2-3% less damage than a level 4 in power, and Cruelty is essentially free. Next 6 link we have Cast When Damage Taken, Link with Crackling Lands, Conductivity, Hex Touch, Cold Snap, and Inspiration. We use Crackling Lands because it is a wide range insta hit damage skill, so it is very good at applying Conductivity through Hex Touch. And it is also very good at stacking Inspiration Charges as well, since Hair of Thunder cannot stack Inspiration Charges itself. We have Cold Snap over here because it allows us to gain Frenzy Charges when we kill things inside the chill ground created by Cold Snap. We use Val Cold Snap because sometimes you will run into situations where you want to manually shock or kill things in a specific area, and since Veil skills can still manually be used when it is linked with cast when damage taken, so this gives us an active skill for those situations. Note that because we want to trigger this link as much as we can, so we have to use level 1 cast when damage taken, level 4 or lower crackling lands, and level 7 or lower cold snap. Next 4 link is another cast when damage taken, link with Stormbrand, Hydrosphere and Power Charge on crits. Hydrosphere and Stormbrand both continuously exist on the ground and will continuously be hitting something which will make sure that we are always shocking something so that Hair of Thunder will always be active. And also, Power Charges can reliably be sustained. The Hydrosphere here is especially important because it will apply Lightning Exposure which is powered up by our Ascendancy passive, which is a huge damage source. And since the Hydrosphere is quote unquote nerfed in 3.17 so that it can only be hit once every second, we can now use it on this build without the worry of Harrow Thunder always targeting the Hydrosphere. Now we also want to trigger this link as much as we can, so we are using level 1 cast when damage taken, level 8 storm brand and level 3 hydrosphere. Next is another cast when damage taken, link with immortal call, life tap and increased duration. Since we are constantly taking damage and we already have the primal ages from our ascendancy that serves similar purpose as steel skin and molten shell. So having Steel Skin or Molten Shell is less effective compared to Immortal Call. We use Life Type so that it is always guaranteed to proc since we have so many triggered skills and not much mana to support them. Next we have yet another cast wind damage taken, Link on a Stone Golem because I'm lazy and I don't want to self-cast Stone Golem all the time. 
And lastly, we have Flame Dash link with Life Tap because again, we want to guarantee our mobility skill are usable at all times. Another use of Flame Dash is to start off Hero Thunder by hitting something. In fact, Flame Dash is your only active skill at the start of the map to trigger your Herald Thunder. You can just get hit by something and trigger Crackling Lands and therefore start the Herald Thunder. But purposely taking hit all the time is not really a good idea on this not exactly a tanky build. And that's it for the build. This build will guarantee you a top tier mapping experience with just around 15x to start with. After the character was completed, I was having so much fun on mapping that by the time I realized, I've already farmed around 50 exiled worth of currencies. Now, hopefully this build doesn't get nerfed in the future because this is the first time that the build is actually decent to play with at a low price tag. With that said, it is definitely not suitable for a league starter because you do need around 90% of the puzzle for the build to actually start feeling good. Even if you have all the gears, it won't function properly until you are around level 85 or something. Before then, you will either be dying to random things or you will do no damage. At least that was my experience. But once you get through the leveling process, everything is smooth sailing after that. Anyways, that's it for today. Subscribe for extra mirror drop chance. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.